Hey, Dan Coach Emilio here for NorCal Sports Network in another video. This time we're going to talk about Giants and Dodgers and why the Giants have lost ground to the Dodgers. There's so many things we can say here. Uh, the Dodgers recipe for success versus the Giants recent missteps. The Dodgers being miles ahead of the Giants, why they can't keep up. Why the Dodgers are crushing the Giants, it's not even close. Uh, why the Giants are stuck in neutral while the Dodgers soar, on and on and on. But we're going to get right to it. Before we do, I want to thank our sponsor of this video, Chapman Law Group. Check out them in the description of this video. All right, here we go. This Giants-Dodgers rivalry has been intense. It's regarded as one of the fiercest and longest standing rivalries in American baseball with many observers considering it the greatest sports rivalry of all time. It dates back to the late 19th century when both clubs were based in New York City. And then in after the 57 season, Dodgers owner Walter O'Malley, O'Malley decided to move the team to L.A. for financial and other reasons along the way. He convinced then-Giants owner Horace Stoneham, who was actually considering moving his team to Minnesota, to preserve the rivalry by bringing the team to California as well. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of history. Both teams, the Dodgers just won their eighth World Series championship as an organization. The Giants in New York and San Francisco have won a total of eight as well. So it's eight, eight there. And uh, National League pennants, Dodgers have 25. The Giants have 23. So uh, very much even there. Back on the East Coast, when they were playing in New York, the Giants had led the series 722 to 671, and there were 17 ties. However, since they moved to the West Coast, the Dodgers lead 608 to 562. That was at the end of the 23 season, so it's a little bit more. Now I'm looking at these numbers online here. So after the 24 season, there's another... Oh, what? The Giants won 780 this year and the Dodgers won 98. So another 18 game gap there. So the Dodgers uh, have, uh, well, that's that's overall record. Just the season, the record, the Dodgers uh, have a little bit better record there as they won the series this past year. But head to head but when you look at overall record the giants since 2017 when the giants started their downfall the dodgers have won 170 more games in those eight seasons 107 that's more than one full season of victories so why is this why are the dodgers storing and why are the giants uh, fading and have faded. Well, in 2014, the LA Dodgers signed an $8.3 billion TV contract for local rights to broadcast the Dodger games in Southern California. $8.3 billion. That, and it lasts for 25 years. It goes till 2038. And their revenue. TV revenue is bringing in over $150 million more per year than the Giants. That's uh, astronomical. So think about that. And what have the Dodgers done? What have the Dodgers done that the it's different than the Giants? Okay, back in, what year was it? 2000. 18, I believe it was, 19, uh, the Dodgers traded for Mookie Betts, all right? In that trade, the Dodgers gave up Alex Verdugo, who just played for the Yankees this year, catcher Connor Wong, and infielder Jeter Downs, okay? Nothing earth-shattering that the Dodgers gave up, okay? Nothing at all for a Top five player in the game in Mookie Betts. All right, this is what the Dodgers did. Then what else did the Dodgers do in this stretch since 2017? 
Well, back in 2021, they traded for Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. What did they give up? They gave up Kelbert Ruiz, who was the Dodgers' number one prospect at the time, and right-handed pitcher Josiah Gray, who was their number two, and right-handed pitcher Gerardo Carrillo. Carrillo, excuse me. Their number 17, and outfielder Donovan Casey, unranked. Okay, so the Dodgers have given up these prospects, and then they get Scherzer and Turner, which, you know, Turner stayed an extra year, Scherzer left. But the bottom line is the Dodgers have been able to trade off their top prospects for superstars, while the Giants had an opportunity in 2021 with Joey Bart, who was ranked very highly, and um, shortstop at the time, uh, Marco Luciano. And what did the Giants do? They did nothing. They they basically gave up Joey Bart last year for, for basically nothing to the Pittsburgh Pirates because he was out of options. And then you got Luciano, who still hasn't made an impact in the big leagues yet. And this is what great organizations do. The Dodgers have been able to make moves while the Giants have not made any moves. And they and Farhan Zaidi, uh, you know, president of baseball ops until just a month or two ago, after the 24 season being let go, he set this organization way, way back. Now Buster Posey has taken over, and I like the moves that Buster's making. What it's what's it gonna take for the Giants? to catch the Dodgers and surpass them. Prior to this World Series championship of the Dodgers just completed a few weeks ago, the Giants had one more World Series title. So we're not talking about an organization that actually could not compete with the Dodgers. What's happened is, is the Dodgers ownership has decided to spend money that they're taking in from their revenue, and they've decided to go all out. While the Giants sit on a gold mine there at Third and King in San Francisco with all that property with Mission Rock that's going to make them hundreds of millions of dollars, they haven't been willing to spend the money. And they also haven't developed well at all in their farm system. Heck, Elliot Ramos, who had a breakout season, was not even going to be a factor had it not been for injuries to the San Francisco Giants' three outfielders, Jung Hu Lee and Austin Slater, and I believe it was Michael Conforto, all got injured within one week's time, which brought up Ramos and gave him a path to playing time. And if you watch NorCal Sports Network, for over two years, I was telling you, Elliot Ramos has talent and he needs to be in the lineup. And I'll tell you who else needs to be going forward in the lineup is Luis Matos because he can hit the ball. He is what you need. He's a guy that doesn't strike out a lot, but the Giants don't give their guys opportunities to see what they can do. And this is one thing the Dodgers have done is they've developed players, the ones that they can utilize, they've brought up and they, they play them, the ones that they feel may not be to the caliber that or true major leaguers, they move off of them and they know what they have. The Giants under Farhan just floundered away six wasted years. I mean, Elliot Ramos was drafted by the previous regime, Bobby Evans, who in fact, Bobby Evans recently brought back on as an advisor to the San Francisco Giants. He was responsible for many of the players that are actually performing. Ryan Walker, who's going to be one of the best closers it looks like in baseball, Bobby Evans. Okay, so Farhan really, really screwed a lot of things up. Now, Farhan did bring in some good players. I, I'm, there's no doubt, you know, there, there's guys that have performed under Farhan in some of his moves. Patrick Bailey, um, you know, you have uh, Tyler Fitzgerald that looks like a, a player. But the Giants, what do they need to do to get back into competing with the LA Dodgers. Well, first of all, they're going to have to revamp their farm system and it's a good start. Buster Posey brought in Randy Wynn, who is now going to be 
uh, VP of player development in the minor league. So it's a good move because Randy, Randy Wynn is a good ball player. He made a lot of good contact. He stole bases. He was fundamentally sound. I like the move of Randy Wynn starting. That's a good start. It's going to take a while, but Buster Posey looks like the right guy to maybe turn this thing around. It's not going to be done overnight. And is the answer to try and go out and get a Juan Soto and sign a bunch of star free agents? Well, if you want to compete right now and maybe try to, you know, get in the playoffs and anything can happen and you and and maybe you can compete for a World Series by signing some of these guys, yes, that could be a possibility. But I don't think it's sustainable. What the Giants need to do is rebuild from the ground up. And I think that's what Buster Posey is going to do because you have to look at teams that have had success in building their farm systems. Baltimore has done it recently. Tampa Bay has been a a great feeder developing players. Of course, the Dodgers, the Houston Astros. Now they have been successful since, you know, their debacle. They had two or three 100 year loss, 100 loss teams in, uh, you know, around 2011, 12 in that era, 10, 12. They were horrible, but they've been great since, you know, they've been on the uprise since 2013 and then haven't looked back. So the Giants have to build something that's sustainable. I think Buster Posey realizes that, and he's about to put things in motion to make this club actually a competitive team going forward. So that's my recommendation. Giants need to rebuild, make certain trades along the line, but to be a sustainable team that wins year after year. And they brought in baseball people to do that now. You know, back when they had Brian Sabian take over at the end of the 96 season, along with Ned Colletti, the Giants made some trades. They drafted. They ended up from 1997 through 2004 having eight straight winning seasons, better than what the Dodgers were doing during that era. Then they had a few down years from 05 to 08. But during that period, Sabian was drafting well. And you had the likes of Matt Kane and Tim Lincecum and Madison Bumgardner, uh, Brian Wilson, uh, Santiago Castillo, many pitchers that they brought up. And then, of course, the the hitters led by Buster Posey and um, Pablo Sandoval and Brandon Belt, Brandon Crawford, trades for guys like Hunter Pence and another farm guy, uh, Joe Panic, and Marco Scudero, just trades around the edges, and you've got to have a farm system to do it. So I think the Giants are on the right track. It may take a couple of seasons to get there, but if it's done right, I think the Giants will be able to compete. The other key thing is ownership has to want to win. They have to want to win and compete. You've got to have the mindset of owners that want to win. And when Peter McGowan took over this team in 1993, the first thing he did was sign Barry Bonds to a seven-year, $43 million free agent contract. He went out and signed maybe the greatest baseball player of all time, arguably so. But they wanted to win. Peter McGowan wanted to win. Brian Sabian wanted to win. Dusty Baker, they had great people. Now the Giants have to redo this. And they've got to get the right people in place. And I think Buster is the man to do it. He's a winner. He's a proven winner. He's a Hall of Famer. He will do the right things to build this thing. So we'll see how it works out, guys. Give him time. I think it gets done. So thanks for this video, watching this video. Please comment in the sections below uh, there on YouTube. Tell us what you think. Like and subscribe to the video. And catch us here on NorCal Sports Network. We're live every night around 8 p.m. Pacific. Check out for our videos. Again, thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you think in it. And uh, we'll catch you either on the next video or the next live stream. Thanks for watching.